as we go to the start list of semi-final AB number two, lane one Spain, lane two Croatia, lane three Ireland, lane four New Zealand, lane five Norway and lane six Germany. So we will have a look at the start. This race due off in a couple of minutes. The Spanish world silver medalist, Henley winners, Alex Garcia Puloja and Rodrigo Conde Romero on that first lane, 23 and 25 years of age, respectively. These men don't really need an introduction. Valant Sinkovic, the stroke, and Martin Sinkovic of Croatia, coached by Nikki Bralic, incredible ambassadors for the sport. Three times Olympians looking to make it four. This fast Irish double, Dr. Philip Doyle, in the stroke seat from Portora Boat Club and uh, Dara Lynch from Clonmel. The two Kiwis, Robbie Manson, world record holder in the men's single skull, and Ben Mason rode up and down the South Islands to raise funds for his mother, who very sadly passed away to, uh, a, a few years ago. The Norwegians, Jan Oskar Staber, Helvig and Chris Brune had a wonderful race in the quarterfinal to get into this semi. Chris Brune, of course, in that double that flipped over in the Tokyo Olympics. And it's the Germans, Jonas Gelsen and Mark Weber. You can hear the heartbeat there. The two men from Moody Club Nassoya Hotscht and Steinmüller Marburg. And their hearts will be beating in their chests, won't they, as they sit here, waiting for the start. There was a big cheer went up for the Irish crew. I don't know if you could hear it in the background, but there's a good Irish support here. And again, I can't help having my eye drawn towards the centre of the course. Can't help thinking the Sinkoviches will go out and want to follow up that statement made by the double from the Netherlands with their very own statement to say we're here to fight for the gold medal. But I think it's the crew from Ireland and the crew from New Zealand who'll be really in here fighting for that third qualifying place to get through to the A final and secure Paris qualification. So the doubles blast off in this second semi-final. Many pundits reckon this is the toughest event of the World Championship, such is the standard this event the Croatians finished in fourth place in the world's last year the Spanish were one of the doubles that got ahead of them and they have blasted out but of course the Norwegians on this near side we see that so often the crews on this side with the quick start huge start here from Spain over in lane one they know exactly who's sitting in lane two next to them they were silver medalists from the world championships last year but picking up uh, minor placings, fifth in World Cup three and the European Championships, but looking to display the form that took them to the podium at last year's World Championships. I think they've shown up really well prepared for these championships. They've looked really on form all week as we ride here with that Spanish crew. Yeah, having a look at that Spanish double, they have looked good. The whole team's looked pretty good this week. Also in our hotel, also competed at Henley Royal Regatta, so it's good to see them using that race to prepare for the World Championships. And they're leading the Sinkovic brothers, but it feels like the Sinkovic brothers are just starting to move back on them. And I'm sure the Irish will be pleased to, to try to go with the Sinkovic brothers and stay, stay overlapping if they possibly can. I'm just going to think, if you're watching this in New Zealand, we hope you're enjoying this presentation. The Kiwi double just a little bit out of there, Robbie Manson and Ben Mason. And uh, they're going to need to really keep in there in this second quarter. They're back in fifth place at the moment, but if they want to qualify, we need to see something special from them. Yeah, that's right. It's the New Zealanders in that boat number four. We saw them make the A final in Lucerne. I'm wondering whether they will have been able to move on. And if anything, the race is tightening up right now. Yeah, it looks as though, in fact, just as we've been speaking about them, so their ears were burning because they pushed themselves into fourth place and ahead of Norway. And we basically have lanes one to six 
in placings one to six at this stage. I wonder if that's reflective of the conditions out there, but the Spanish still with just a one metre lead over the Croatians and now the Irish are starting to pull themselves back into race contention. Yeah, the Irish are on a roll at this uh, World Rowing Championships. Um, their performance director, Mario Giovanni's big smile on his face, the number of crews that he's qualified for Paris. This double, or another nailed on qualifier at the moment. Look at them just pressing for the lead and uh, the Kiwis just losing it a little bit at the moment. Nailed on qualifier sounds a bit early for me at 850 metres <laughs> gone, but the Irish have got their bow ball in front, Dara Lynch backing up Phil, Phil Doyle in the stroke seat. He's such a good athlete. He's so lean and cut. He looks strong walking around. And look at them here, getting that bow ball out in front and all importantly, moving away from the New Zealanders for them. And the Croatians as well, just that edge on the Croatians as we go through the thousand meters, three doubles in a line. New Zealand not far off the back, but we'll need to see more for them in the third quarter. It's the Norwegians just behind New Zealand in fifth place, Germany off the back in sixth. I wouldn't discount the New Zealanders at this point. I think they're not that far. It's only a length at this point in time. Anything could happen here, but the Irish moving themselves into the lead. We hear the huge cheers coming from the supporters from Ireland in the stands every time they come up on screen. But they're now challenging the Sinkoviches as these three bow balls are almost in a line as we're coming up to the 1200 meter mark well here's the irish they are shoulder to shoulder alongside the croatians alongside the spanish and they will want to just keep their bow ball in there fantastic for them you can see it in the bottom left if you're following in new zealand looking forward to the rugby world cup coming up later on today you will see your crew needs to make a big move if they're to get back on terms and get into these qualifying positions look at this move from the sinkoviches now we're starting to see why they are who they are. Of course, gold medalists from the Tokyo Olympics in the men's pair, picking up a second oar again and coming back to the double skull as they're moving now to three metres ahead, about a canvas ahead of the Irish. Yeah, which they won, of course, in the Rio Olympics in 2016. And of course, they got those medals in the quad, silver medals in 2012. We're taking a look at the Spanish. They've dropped off the pace just a little bit in terms of those leaders back into third position now. But Sarah Cook, we watched the, the Netherlands. You said they made a statement when they made a big move in their third 500. I wonder if the Sinkovic is here are trying to make a very similar kind of statement. Well, they've taken almost half a length in that 500 metres. Do they have another gear to go? There is a fight opening up behind these three leading crews. The Spanish are going to have to watch the Kiwis. Never discount a Kiwi crew, we know. No, don't count down a Kiwi team. They're going to need a big second half in this one, but they've come out fighting in the second half. They could yet get through the Spanish over there in lane one. The Spanish went out and led, and a crew which has led is often the one that you might be able to pick off in the last 500, and that's what the New Zealanders are going to need to do to make it through to the A final. Yeah, I like Garcia Puloa and Conde Romero's ability to sprint at the finish. I think that's still there. The Croatians struggling to get clear water on Dara Lynch and Phil Doyle. The New Zealanders, you can see the gap. It's not going to happen for Manson and Mason. Well, just looking at the bottom, you've got the German crew at the bottom of the picture, the Norwegians, they look fairly out of it. But if the Spanish were to falter, there's three crews who are creeping up behind them. Yeah, they've got that lane one, though. I mean, surely that's going to give them a huge advantage over the crews on this side. Yeah, you can see the water over there in lane one. The Spanish now entering the protected waters of lane one. The Kiwis are exposed. You can see the gusts across their lane. They're going to have too much of too much work to be able to get themselves back into the race. Yeah, you can see it in that pitch that you're talking about, Sarah. You can see how calm the water looks over there for the Spanish and the Croatians. The Irish, it gets a bit more bumpy, and it's very difficult over here as we're coming down to the line. Croatia take a Paris qualification slot. They win the second men's semi-final. A great result. Their hands go up in the air. Phil Doyle's hand goes up in the air for Ireland. In third place, it was the world silver medalist from Spain, Garcia Poloja and Conde Romero. Well done to Paul. Gene Sanhuea, their coach, and in fourth place, Manson and Mason, Helvig and Brun, and Gelsen and Weber from Germany will go through to the B final. There are places for them. The top 11 men's doubles will qualify directly for Paris from the World Championships.
Well, great skull from the Croatians. You can see they were very satisfied with what they've done. They're already thinking about the A final. The Irish punching the air, their supporters together, standing tall in the crowd, in the stand, enjoying that moment. And the Spanish did a lovely job there, hanging on to make sure they made the most of that opportunity they had on that side of the course.